Hey guys, what's up? Um, welcome to another with this hand with these hands. Um, I am Juanita, also known as Del Quan, also known as She Spins. You can find me on Ravelry at She Spins. You can find me on Twitter at She Spins Calm, and you can find me on Instagram at She Spins LSC. So it's been a busy weekend. And if you follow me on Facebook then you know it's been a busy weekend over here. Um, we went yarn shopping because I have some commissions to do. So I had to get yarn for that. And I'm not going to show up because it's just regular um, team spirit yarn from Red Heart kind of stuff. And there's the man back there. You can't see him because he's not bending down because he's tall. So, yeah. I'm looking for the measuring tape. The measuring tape should be downstairs in one of those drawers on the roll top desk. The drawers on the left. Mm -hmm. Or look on and also look on top of your big black cabinet. It could be there. So <clears throat> this has been a busy weekend. I will show you the items that I finished because more than likely they will be given to their recipients tomorrow. So I'm going to show you this first. And these are crochet. Uh, this is a rib crochet hat. Very easy rib crochet hat pattern. You can't mess this pattern up. Uh, if you want the top portion to appear ribbed as well, and see I got to sew in my ends. I'll do that sometime tonight. Then all you do is do a front post crochet all the way around. And you're going to end up with this circular. And you do front post increases as well. You'll end up with a circular shape on the top. Okay. So it's, it's pretty much it is if you want, don't mind this little ridge. It's pretty much reversible. Um, so that's one head of finish. And I'll use Lion Brand's Woolies in the Oxford Gray colorway. And then I also used Lime Brand Woolies in the Gray Heather colorway. So I don't know which was which. They look similar. One's a little lighter. One's a little darker. You can see the bottom of this one matches uh, that other one. So I really don't care. They're gray. And they're freebies for some co-workers, so I'm not worried about it. Um, so those are two finished items. I'm still working on the scarf, the, the knit scarf with the cabled pattern. I'll show you guys that as well. And the yarn I'm using for this one is Caron. No, is it Caron? No, it's Red Heart Super Saver. It's in the buff colorway. It's actually very soft. This is very, very soft. Uh, so this, I think some of the problems with, with Red Heart feeling scratchy and hard before you wash it is the dyeing process. Because this one is very soft. So this is the cable. I don't know how close it is. You guys can see the cable. It's a 12 row repeat. Real easy. And it is about, uh, I'm five four, so it's a little over, it's probably about five feet or something long. I gotta do five more repeats on it, and this part of the scarf will be done. Spinning. I've done a lot, a lot of spinning. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see how much spinning I've done. Um. This is on the Vespera E spinner, and this is some, I want to say is more than likely some, not BFL, but just Leicester Long Wool or Curly Fleece. It has to, but it looks more like Leicester Long Wool than Curly Fleece. And when I wet it, it didn't like Curly Curly Curly. It had a slow loose crimp, so I don't think it's Curly Fleece. Um, and then I've been, and I have another bobbin that same size. It's almost full, and I'm gonna fit from this bag here. As you can see, it on the spinner. 
and it's in greens and blues and aquas and yellows. It's almost full. I have two small bobbins on my B of the Leicester Long Wool. And right now I'm doing a two ply of that and it's real pretty. Uh, and then I have these bobbins from my B and these are all merino and they're fibers that I dyed to focus. So it's very, I can't wait to apply these because this one right here, I'm going to try and reproduce this colorway because I love that one. Uh, and then this is fiber that I got from Maryland Sheep and Wool this year. If any of you watched that haul video, then you saw this. I believe this is BFL mixed with mohair and a little bit of silk. So these are absolutely gorgeous. There's those two. And this small one. And these would be a DK weight yarn. I spun them that way on purpose. I got cow plans for these cows. Or some scarves. Infinity scarves. And then this one. This, this one is so pretty. It's just mm, gorgeous. Okay, so that is the spinning that I've been doing. And I know that people who don't spin and they really don't care about spinning, but I love to spin. So that's why I always showcase that in my videos. So hey. Spindle spinning. I'm on the last of the four ounce braid of Fakun. Um, this is the spindle I'm using right now and it's getting a little heavy. So the next spindle that's up is this one. I can give out the bag. Your bell jingling. It's my husband's fault. He bought bells because he wants a Christmas stocking. So that ain't it. Let's go. Try not to let it fall, but hey, it's just me. So, I'm not going to show you the yarn, but I will show you my husband's silicone bells. The cat. Not be bad. Something else irritates me. This fellow was a gift from my friend Cheryl, who moved to Arizona and started her own farm and fiber adventure. So freaking jealous. But this is the fellow Cheryl gave me. And I believe that's maple. It's either maple or birch. I can't remember which one. White maple or birch. More likely it's white maple. Could be birch. I'm not a wood. Since I didn't buy it, I really don't know. Maybe she watches my video, she can send me an email and tell me what it was, but she can check her she can check her purchases. So yeah. So I'll be switching to this one to finish up the rest of this wool because this bottom is getting kind of heavy. Uh so all my current bobbins that got stuff on them are in this bag right now. So eventually I got a go through those too and um, clean them off so that is what I've been spinning and what I've been what is that biting me I was out in the garden pulling up the squash that did come up but it came up too late after we got all that heavy rain and had the flooding in this area and stuff um, they're putting out tons of flowers but I don't cook Flowers, squash flowers and eat them. I know there are people who do do that, but by the time I would get it to them, it would be wilted. So I pulled all that stuff up. I got the rest of the sunflowers that were, um, I used the fence as a um, stabilizer for them. So I pulled up the rest of all those, threw all that stuff on the mulch pile. Um, the tomatoes, I pulled up one of the tomato plants, a couple of the pepper plants. They're on the back porch hanging up drying the pepper plants because I want to save those pepper seeds. Um, those peppers are absolutely gorgeous. They have a wonderful flavor. They have heat, but it is the more you cook it, the hotter it gets. So it's perfect for that first taste of chili for the people who don't want really hot chili. Um, and then it's also perfect for people who want a chili with a hot, with a more, with more heat to it. Just add a little bit more cayenne and let it steep a little bit longer with that other, with that, those peppers. And, but it's such a wonderful flavor. Those peppers are perfect for chili. And the packets are some like packets. Like I ordered some seeds from this place. Um, those honey candy, those candy onion 
yeah, candy onion seeds from this place on Amazon. And he threw in packets, just said peppers. So these peppers are awesome. I wish I I've been calling Hungarian sweet peppers because that's what they look like. But the Hungarian sweet peppers hang down. Um, sweet chilies hang down. These peppers grow sticking up. So if I don't know what pepper they are, I'm gonna be researching this year, this summer, but not summer. I'm gonna be researching sometime this winter to try and figure out what if I can figure out what peppers those are. Cause they're an awesome pepper, and that's why I'm saving the seeds so I can grow some more. Uh, I didn't grow jalapenos this year, uh, and that's why I want to try and get some good jalapeno seeds. So if you're also a gardener and you got extra jalapeno seeds and you want to share, just hit me up, send me a message um, here, Facebook or YouTube. I mean, here, Facebook or Google Plus, send me a message and, um, and stuff. Cause I don't mind. I, I haven't started saving seeds other than the. I'm sorry. I've been having heartburn bad again, regardless of what I don't eat or what I do eat. I can just start, I can just be drinking water and I'll start my acid reflex and reflux is starting again. Um, so if you see me doing this, it's because I'm trying to tamp it back down. Um, it's just gross, but hey, life isn't perfect and there's no perfect individuals and we're all human beings, so we all have some of the same issues. And if, as my uncle say, if your shit don't stink, you're not a human being. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone, but I, I you know, I tell it like it is. <laughs> so, anyway, dun, 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 seed swapping. I do have seeds from the red sugar canes. Now, these are heirloom seeds. I don't know who my daddy got them from, but he's had them for a long time. And then he gave me some of them. Um, and so, these do not get, they look, they're, they're about as thick as this. 13 size 13 knitting needle now I noticed they were sending up new shoots beside the old plant so this year I'm gonna leave the old plants some of the old plants down I'm not gonna pull them all up this year so all I do is give them away I'm gonna leave some of them down and see if they'll get bigger with the second year of growth if they do then and if any of you guys grow red sugar cane let me know if I should be doing that or maybe I just need to find another place to grow them and just like super nutrient rich them, enrich them and see if I can get them to be bigger than this. Um, they used to grow white sugar cane too when I was little and that stuff would be like that thick around and real sweet and juicy. Probably why all of us ended up being diabetics when we got um. <laughs> But yeah, I digress. So, now, the, 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 the kids went to the Comic Con, Neko Con, I think that's what they call it, over in Hampton Roads this weekend. And my son was next. Um, Pudding was my oldest daughter. She was Raven from the original Teen Titans, that Raven, the awesome, the cool Raven. And then my daughter Marissa was, I can't even remember that character name. Because I don't watch some of the stuff they be watching. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, her character. I'm going to post a picture so you guys can see them. Oh. Yeah, I probably missed it too. Dee's Dee Dee's streaming. I'm going to have to try and get over there. Um, I'll just post a picture and whoever knows the name of the tune or I'll just put it in the description box or I'll put like one of those little, the little tags on it. And let you guys know her character's name. But she looks awesome. My kids look awesome. My little nerdy kids look so awesome. I don't know where they got that nerdiness from. <laughs> um, so yeah. That is pretty much it. And um, We got Miss Rissa a sewing machine today. As you know, she's the one that's been in all those competitions. Um, and she goes to the technical, Norfolk Technical School instead of the high school. She does some classes at the high school, but most of her classes are at the technical school now. And she graduates this year. Um, she's trying to get into the fashion, the FIT or some other fashion school. So she's my little fashionista. So I got her a sewing machine today. And hopefully I can get her to make me some project bags and some, some um, bags for my spindles. Oh, speaking of bags, Ashley, my friend Ashley, who you all, all you guys know, as Mitz Play 84 
on YouTube and Ravelry. I've posted her information before. I'll put it there again. She made me a box bag because I was like, oh, I want a box bag. Make me a box bag. And she made me a box bag. So this is and it's a big one. So you can put two full skeins. Of, I love this yarn in here along with your, your needles and whatnot. I put my spindle in here and some fiber, my cell phone, um, both of these hats. This hat, this hat and gloves. I stuffed all this stuff in here when I was at her house last night. And it fit fine. Plenty of room. And it has a handle. So you can put it on, on your wrist if you want to. Dun, dun, dun. And the interior is just plain old black, blue. Because I am not I am not picky when it comes to people gifts that they give me. I, I look at it as an act of love, which it was, and I didn't do it, and I can't do it. Well, I probably could if I wanted to, but I've never liked sewing, not even when I was at home. It, you hear me griping and complaining all the time about having to sew stuff together that I make. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love it, I love it, I love it. So, and yes, I do like gifts. I like giving stuff away, but I do like receiving things as well sometimes, y'all. Come on now. Um, so, I really like this bag. I just love how big this bag is so definitely 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 i don't know if she has any in her etsy or not but if she puts some in there then i'll definitely let you guys know so yeah so that was something i received and it's pretty much it i'm getting ready for my next pen i have to finish spinning this stuff right here it won't take long on the electric spinner wheel. And those colors are not correct. It's more of a mint green. You know that um, fluoride we used to have to switch when we were in school? Those of us old enough to remember have to do that. Margaret, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, it's it's fluoride. That's why I called it to the two months ago. I said, this is the fluoride. <laughs> the fluoride swish. That's what I call it. Because they also had like this whitish, more whitish colored one that was just nasty tasting that we had to swish sometimes too. So, and I really think that's why I had so much trouble with my teeth growing up was the freaking fluoride. Because before they started giving us that fluoride, I didn't have any problems with my teeth. I didn't have any cavities or anything. But that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, I've been moving stuff around in here, getting ready for my next spin. I mean, because I've been spinning so much, it makes it a lot easier. So, the next spin, this is some fiber that I got from Cop Copper Moose. And I forgot what it is. I know I did a video about it a long time ago. But I can look through all my old Copper Moose purchases and try to find out what it was. It's got a little bit of vegetable stuff in there because I think I stuck some alpaca from the farm in there too. I gotta sweep my floor in there so it not hurt me. But it's soft, whatever it is. I don't remember what it is, but it's very soft. And I love this pretty color. It's got some grays, some more some um darker bread brownish grays in there. Different very very it's like different variations of browns and brown grays. Very pretty stuff. For those who like natural color natural color fiber okay then i have some small bags of stuff that i'm trying to get spun off and out of the way so i have this which is red orange and yellow i don't know if they're a team with that color ray it's pretty when you spin it up though so i have this oh, you can see it red orange and yellow and a bottle of that and this is some stuff from the farm. Um, I have some orange, some red, and some more red and cuts a little bit for. So all that stuff has to get spun up. And then once that's spun up, I will move on to that, that those bags of alpaca back there. My and this is part of my 2015 project. In 2015, the year for me, I will be doing my pay it forward. Okay, I will be doing my pay it forward. The pet for it was only hats this year. Only hats. Now, if by chance there is someone who gets on the pet forward and they want something for a baby, I will do a baby blanket for a baby. Okay? 
that's always been what I do. If it's for or for an elderly person, they want a lap blanket for, I would do so a, a lap blanket for elderly person, elderly person. So yeah, but everybody else, it's hats this year, hats in 2015 rather, it's hats, hats, hats only. Okay, now I what's that? And it's stash yarn, it's just like last year. It is stash yarn, not my hand spun. Stash yarn. I might, I mean, it's not like I'm lacking hand spun. So if someone's a knitter or a crocheter and they want to scan a hand spun instead of a scarf, then yeah. It, but it's my choice. My choice. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty much it. And so, so it's the year of spinning and the year of me crocheting a bunch of these real beanies because they're wool hogs as they, as you say or wool pigs like some people like to say I'll be crocheting a bunch of these bad boys for Edmark Foundation using stash yarn and I like this one too the way I did out when I just did like a regular beanie at the top and then I started doing the one by the ribbing and I like this one too and I, I'm not gonna put it on because I've been outside in the garden and stuff and I gotta wash my hair tonight I got a lot of dust and stuff from all that stuff that was taller than me having to be pulled out and you know sunflowers they're messy plants and the stuff just like rain down on my head so yeah I'm going to be I'm also going to be doing a couple of giveaways U.S. Continental United States only I repeat Continental United States only even if I don't say it in the video Continental United States only. I will try to remember to say it in the video or I will hold up a sign or something that says Continental United States only. There will be no excuses this year. Um, you not, you know, uh -uh. I ain't got time for that mess this year. I'm not trying to be too nice this year. I always, I, I, I used to be really mean. Seriously, I used to be really mean. Really, really, really mean. But then I became more comfortable with myself, the comfortable with who I was, who I wanted to be. And I got to the point where I didn't care what other people thought about me. I'm going to be me. And if you don't like it, walk away. You don't have to be my friend. Keep on moving. There are people who will, who will understand me, who will enjoy being around me, being myself. And those are the people I want surrounding me. People who don't have a problem with me being who I am. And... That means spinning, that means talking about computers, that means gaming, that means, you know, anime, manga, and, and drawing, and art. Just all the things that I love to do. I'm not trying to conform to anyone else's standards or what. The Joneses can kiss my, okay? Joneses can go wherever the Joneses gotta go because they don't pay my bills or take care of my family. That's how I feel about that. Uh, you know, this part of the problem in the United States and part of the problem in the world are people trying to keep up with the quote unquote Joneses. Let the Joneses go about their business. You take care of yourself and your family, take care of your community, okay? And let the world worry about the rest of them foods. That's how I feel about that. Because it has nothing, all, all this political and religious stuff, it's ridiculous. Because if you treat people the way you want to be treated, you will never have a problem with anybody. If you are respectful to people regardless of their walk of life, regardless of their situation, regardless of their job, regardless of who they are, you wouldn't have a lot of the problems we have. It's when people start trying to separate themselves and put themselves above other human beings that we start having all these problems. A human being is a human being. I don't care what color their skin is. I don't care what language they speak. I don't care what kind of clothes or customs they have. A human being is a human being. And that's the way it, where it should start and that's where it should stop. Their religious beliefs and all this other stuff, that's their personal stuff and it should not come into the situation. That's for them. Now you need to respect it, but it don't mean you have to follow it. And they should respect yours. And you shouldn't push yours on them, they shouldn't push, push theirs on them. And it should have no part in government of any type. It should be it should, separation of church and state, which you don't see anymore. Church and state are not separate like they used to be. There's a lot of stuff that's religious getting thrown up into government, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Same thing with people in their personal lives and homes. It's like 1984, but it's in 2014.
So if you never read, read if you never read 1984 by, by George Orwell, be with George Orwell. You should read it, and you you will laugh at the comparisons. Yeah, it was George Orwell. Okay, so yeah, you should definitely read that book because it's part of the problem. Also, you should read The Handmaid's Tale by, what's her name? Um, at, it starts with an A. Oh, I can see that name just popped in my head. Margaret Atwood. Yeah, Atwood. Okay. So you should also read The Handmaid's Tale. Okay. And then just, you know, go out of your way to just be kind to people. As best you can. But don't let people use you either. <laughs> no, we ain't gonna do that. So, because it's kind of like a situation that's going on. And I'm not gonna get to details. But there's a person I know that doesn't have a filter does not have a filter at all and it's working my last nerve okay keep finding myself in situations where um, you're having a sick nervous person and it's driving me freaking crazy but it'll be okay because you know you 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 live and you learn you live and you learn so but it's at that point where this non-filtered individual has offended someone who is like one of the sweetest people you've ever met in your life and it hasn't happened once it's happened several times and it's at the point where it's time for someone to step in and say hey excuse me can you please watch your damn mouth okay it's, it's gotten to that point and um and it's, it's gonna probably happen soon because um i'm not one to hold my peace for that long and is working my nerves, so something's got to be done soon. And more likely to be me doing it. So, yeah. That's that. Um, now, for all the excitement that happened here, which is a horrible situation. Um, we went to my friend Ashley's house last night in, for a um, fire pit night. And Ash and I were knitting, talking, and I was crocheting, working on his hats and stuff. And, you know, we left there, like, 11 something we got home probably like 11 45 but me and my husband were tired and and um and we went to bed and around i guess 12 45 or even or later in the morning i don't know what short time it was there was gunfire it was and you guys have heard me complain about my neighborhood before the same thing it was like da -da 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 -da. and then there was like this a few seconds later it's like the same shot <laughs> but it all sounded like it came from the same gun um, to me, it did. So I ran to the bathroom, lifted the window like I normally do, and was looking out. And I saw this individual trying to get into the house across the street, but it wouldn't let him in the house. And then the individual dropped like a sack of potatoes to the porch, just just collapsed down. And I was like, "Oh my God!" The kid, you know, the guy got shot. Yeah. So, and then. So my husband said, go ahead and call. I said, go call 911 because police should have been here by now. I mean, those gunshots were very close. I mean, there's a fire department about two blocks over. So there's no way they didn't hear it. Someone, you know, and that's the thing. Other thing, regardless of whether you're the police or if you're some other, other government entity, if you hear these things, aren't you supposed to report these things to get someone in there? I don't know. I know they have to wait for them to secure the scene to make sure the shooter's not there before they can pull the the, the um, emergency vehicles and stuff in there. So that could be the situation and wait for the police to get on the scene and secure the scene. I don't know because I only know what happened right there in front of me. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. So anyway, the police got there and they were, you know, roping up stuff, roping off stuff and everything. And, um, and they brought the individual down off the porch. I thought it was the police, but it could have been the people at, who had that house, who house. But anyway, the, the individual ended up, on, or he could have crawled off the porch, I'm not sure. Um, but the individual ended up 
over on the driveway, like off to the side of the house, on the other side of the driveway between the two houses, kind of right there, but still in their yard. And um, so the ambulance was finally came in, the fire truck came in, and they got the granny off and they ran over and they put the backboard up there and they scooped the guy up, strapped him in, and rode him to the back of the um, ambulance and just took off with him. Um, when they pulled him around, and I didn't get it on video because I was like trying to see down, but he had a huge, like, let's see, this shoulder, he had a huge huge just lots of copious amounts of blood flowing down right on this side here and it looked like he'd been shot elsewhere as well it could have just been where the blood had got him in the body but he was probably running but he got shot um but later on today when my husband and i were out and about i was checking the, the local news which is the pilot online and they said that the young man was only 17 years old and that he had expired um, they pronounced him um, dead, deceased at the hospital when the ambulance got there with him. And so it was like, you know, what was the purpose, you know, of, of taking something that you, as a human being, do not have the power to return? You cannot give that life back. It's just like saying, once the bullet is out of the gun, you can't retrieve it. It's gonna go and do what it's got. It's gonna go and do what it was designed to do, which is maim, kill, destroy. That is the purpose of bullets: maim, kill, destroy. Um, and in the hands of the wrong people, that weapon it becomes a non-discriminate means of basically terrorizing neighborhoods and and things, so that people can do e illegal, dirty work and all this other junk, or just plain stupid and mean or ignorant and got no business with something that powerful so someone took a life last night something they could never return and that person is out there with this with this firearm still probably still in this neighborhood and walking around like their shit don't stink i'll just say it this um and it's ridiculous because this gun the, the gunfire is very distinct and we've heard this gun go off many times in this neighborhood. We've heard it New Year's. We've heard it 4th of July. And no cops ever show up. You'll probably hear it. You'll probably hear it this New Year's. <clears throat> and we'll probably hear it this 4th of July. So, yeah. Other than that, I was out in my garden today, too. To clean up the garden, I think I already mentioned about the peppers and stuff so and we were working in my son's room so we got his new bed put together so he'll be moving back up into his room um then we gotta finish getting marissa's room put together which marissa's room is basically going to be great big black giant you know those giant heavy duty plastic bags all the stuff's gonna be dumped in these bags and her bed put together and everything and then she is responsible for going through her crap. Because if it's left up to me, her crap will be going into the trash dump. That's just how I feel about it. You got too much too much clothes. You can't wear it all. What are you going to do with this crap? That's how I feel about it. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't want it on the floor. I don't want it on the floor in the bed. I want stuff that you can wear and use, hanging up, everything else. Needs to be placed in containers and put in storage in the, either in the basement or out in the garage, but out of the house. Because it's too much. It's too much. Mess. It's too much. So, yeah. Um, and then next weekend, we're supposed to be going down to North Carolina to take the fleeces to get them processed into um drum carter road off the carter depends on how the process are like i said if their process are really good i might just say okay let's combine this wool and this alpaca similar colorways similar colors let's combine these process them together and pin draft it and go ahead and spin it up into worsted sport weight or worsted weight yarn and just then I'll get back here. I can I can handle that too. 
Um, so that is the goal to get the all the fleece that I have in my possession, other than some little small bags. I mean, like they're like bags this size of some samples of merino and some samples of ram of Romney. And I think what is it? I think I have a couple samples like that of um, Rabelais too. Those those are for, I spend those from the lock. So and um, but yeah. I need to get all that fleece fiber processed and then we'll work on how I'm gonna get rid of the yarn. Selling it um maybe doing a destash on ravelry or something, I'm not sure, but some I will keep for my own personal use of course, and then the rest of it has to go. So my goal is to get all the fiber gone, get all my white fibers dyed up, and then just spin, spin, spin next year. Just spin, 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 spin. That is my goal next year. So, my B needs to go in for a tune-up. So, I'm going to find out how much her tune-up prices are now. Um, because she needs a, she needs a good tune-up. And I'll be using the Marchcraft and the Electric wheel in the meantime. Until I get my B back, because she definitely needs a tune up. I spend a lot of yarn. You guys know I spend a lot of yarn. So I, put, I wish I had an odometer on this bad boy, so I could see how much, how far I spun. <laughs> so that would be pretty cool. Well, that's pretty much all that's going on with me. Um, thank you again, Ashley, for the bag. I love it. Um, We give a shout out to Turbo Knitter, which is Ken. Um, he mentioned me in his video last week. Uh, go and give a shout out to Nicole Shaughnessy, Nicolo's podcast. Give a shout out to Melon Shop, um, Pam Chatfield, uh, Aaron, give me yarn 418. Um, Nick Girl 726 Sheepish Podcast Podcast. I can't talk today. To the 50 Ducks in a Hot Tub or the Duck Adventure. I love that show. <laughs> um, to Will Terrell. He put up a new um, a new video for, of people sketching and it was so cool. That little old lady, like, it took me sat to death watching that because everybody's seen somebody like that before in their life. Um, I love watching Alfonso Dunn's Ink um, videos, ink drawing videos. So those are some of in um uh Don and her husband Wolf Farm videos. Um and uh Smells Great Guy videos. And if I didn't mention you, I'm sorry, I'll try to get to you next time. Um those are just some of the ones that just pop into my head right now that I watched 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 this week. Oh yeah. The squash soup at Panera is awesome. Awesome. Get it with the roll or the or the the roll or the what's it? Artesian bread. One of those. It is awesome. Very good. Very good. Very good. So that's that. I'll let you guys go. I gotta get back to work on this freaking scarf because I wanna get it done so that next week I can start on my other commissions. And I'll be showing you guys that periodically. Uh, if there's anything you guys want me to do a tutorial on, let me know. I will try. Not a, not a drawing tutorial because I doodle. I consider my drawing doodling. I'm rarely serious, serious about drawing, you know, trying to get an editing right and all that stuff. I draw to have fun, to relax, and to just enjoy putting marks on paper. Um, that's just me. Uh, there's people, it's not a career for me, it's never going to be a career for me unless something seriously happens and I can't spend no more. Then I have to look at my options. <laughs> um, but I just like drawing just for me and trying different media and stuff because I didn't get the opportunity to do that when I was growing up. I didn't get to take classes and stuff. And now at YouTube, with all the videos and all the information out there, I can, you can pretty much teach yourself or just learn on your own and just enjoy the process. So, yeah. Um, and there are people who say, oh, why don't you move? But the stuff about the shooting, oh, why don't you move? Why don't you move? 
Um, our house, we're buying it. So we're in a mortgage and we bought our house right before the, the real estate market crashed. And so because of the elements in our neighborhood, sometimes the property values have pretty much, they haven't fluctuated much in this area. In our neighborhood, they've actually gone down some because of the um, nefarious activities out here. Uh, in other words, I live in a black neighborhood, and we have the hood element out here that don't know how to act, um, which is why people are getting shot at at night and, and killed and murdered. And um, and I wish it wasn't that way. Otherwise, the majority, I would say 90% of my neighbors are awesome people. We just have that element in the, that, that one, one or two families who, who don't know no better. They're ignorant. That's the best way I can describe it. Because there's, there's no excuse for this crap. None whatsoever. You know? None. So, but yes, if I was in a financial situation where I could walk away from my mortgage, I would. I would just pack up my family and find somewhere out in the country to live and move and regardless of the situation. But I'm not in that type of financial situation. If you are independently wealthy and you have couple hundred thousand to spare you want to buy my house so that I can get out of this neighborhood feel free to contact me and we'll 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 make some arrangements other than that please don't say why don't you move it's plain I, I you know I don't get it I don't get it when people say stuff like that do they think not everybody is sitting around with hundreds of thousands of dollars at their bacon call and they can just up and do whatever they want to do life doesn't work that way in the real world so yeah well, I'm gonna let you guys go I just had to get that out <laughs> because I was like I'm not renting a house this house we, we we're buying this house and we've been struggling to do that when I was out of work so you know I don't know. Filters, people. Filters. Filters. Y'all take care.